What the heck just happened? Ever since I started working on this project, crazy things are happening. Okay, I got the lights back. Uh, anyways, I bet you are watching Marvel What If and just when the 5th episode aired, I so wanted to create a zombie Avengers composition. And what can be the best time than the month of Halloween? So let's not waste a single moment and transform our favorite lovely heroes into something horrific. Okay, let's start with it. In case you are wondering, let me explain why I took this specific cast. I wanted to go with the first 6 Avengers in our first MCU Avengers movie. And after seeing Scarlet Witch in that What If episode, I had to include her for obvious reasons. Now for the references, I took direct references for Iron Man, Captain America, Hawkeye and Scarlet Witch from the episode 5 of What If. And for Thor, Hulk and Black Widow, I took references from the OG comics. If you haven't read the Marvel Zombies comics, be sure to give it a try. And if you're wondering where the heck Spider-Man, Doctor Strange, Black Panther and others are, hey, we need someone to save the day, right? About the composition, I will also try to give more insight into the placement of the heroes. I chose specific images and angles so that it feels that they are coming towards the viewer out from the screen. So I guess you get what it would feel like when I zombify them. Now this composition took more than 20 hours to find correct images and create everything so there is no way I can show you every step in detail but I will definitely try to give helpful tips along the way. Once the basic hero placement was done, I started with zombifying poor Iron Man. I think I spent almost 3 hours finding the correct zombie head that matches the angle. This was very crucial as anything else would ruin the vibe. After masking up the head with the pen tool, I used free transform warp to mold it correctly. I also took the hair from a separate image of Tony and warped it and placed it. I wanted to keep the look somewhat similar to the what if zombie version. Then the mouth area was giving off a devil vibe instead of a zombie so I swapped it with something more accurate. I extracted the mouth from a Halloween mask and scaled and warped it into place. I also added a quick green color casting with the curves adjustment layer. Then I replaced the eyes with somewhat cloudy eyes from a Halloween mask. I feel I almost did a research on how zombies look while doing this composition. Let's proceed with the texturing on the suit. I put rusty metal texture and cycled through the blending mode to see what works best. And I think I kept them to hard light. Then I filled the layer mask with black and painted in correct areas with white to reveal the texture. I also suggest that when you do texturing like these, you cut out different areas based on the form of the main subject, which is the armor in this case, and tweak them a little. It's because a texture overlay has its own continuous pattern and it should vary based on the folds and shapes of the actual underlying object. I also color corrected the textures using hue saturation and curves adjustment layers. Then I put another texture of a cracked surface and gave it the same treatment. Well, I finally started learning curves and using them, so you would be seeing me using curves more often here. Okay, with Tony zombified, let's proceed with the other heroes. I will give them the same treatment so I will not be explaining the same things again and again, it's just rinse and repeat. But let me mention here that I decided to change the head position and angle of cap because firstly it was hard to find any zombie face at that lowered down angle and also I realized that zombies don't actually charge like that. They keep their heads straight up at the target when they charge as their main instinct is to bite or something like that. So it was a good idea to change the head. I think I spent almost an hour to fit zombie captain's head and face the way I wanted. Once satisfied, I placed some images of gashes and wounds and blended them in. It's very hard to find good zombie stock images for a big and varied composition like this. So I went all out and took anything that I found on Google. I primarily used curves to blend the patchwork. You should definitely see Pixim Perfect's videos on curves if you struggle with it. 
Curves are really really powerful if used correctly. Next I added some textures and battle damage on our cap. Now it's time to work on Black Widow. I painted out her face and will use that as a mask for the zombie face. My research on zombie says that this face fits all zombie criteria. So I decided to keep it just like that but warped and scaled it into position. I had to do texturing and other stuff on her body but I was becoming a bit impatient and moved on to the other heroes. For Scarlet Witch, I used the same face mask method. I masked her face but ended up using a similar zombie face like Black Widow. And it did not convey the feeling that I had in my mind. She is looking more like a vampire instead of a zombie. Then I again spent some good hours searching and finally I found this perfect match. This was a no-brainer fit and I quickly placed it on her face and did some initial color correction with curves. Ok one thing here, I checked that Scarlet Witch's nose didn't fall off for some reason so I kept it as it was in the What If episode. I moved on to Hawkeye and this was also a challenge due to the angle of his head. I managed to find some Halloween mask but with eyes closed so yeah we are going to pop them open. With the eyes placed and the nose fixed, I patched in some additional wounds. These are all from different Halloween mask images that I found online. I placed some torn clothes with decaying areas and roughly blended them into place. I'll give the same treatment to the other heroes as well. Then it's time to work on our big green guy. His face was weirdly already somehow in a very correct way. So I didn't have to do much work on that just corrected the mouth area, nose and the eyes. I used curves in combination as before to quickly color correct. Added some gashes and wounds as well. Next I worked on Thor giving him the same treatment. Now I'll give you an interesting backstory here. If you check out the comics, the zombie Thor lost his power and his worthiness, so he could not wield Mjolnir anymore. And he continued his rampage using a makeshift hammer built using a pipe and a cinder block. So I'll be creating that as well. Here I removed Mjolnir and created his makeshift hammer using an iron pipe image and some concrete textures. Obviously I will add some lightning in the sky but it will be somewhat symbolic and for the sake of the environment. Then I again worked on Scarlet Witch and painted her here. It should be obviously floating, there is no doubt about that. For painting the hair, I used multiple layers to create a sense of volume. On the bottom layers, I painted with a dark color, while on the top, I added some lighter tones to create the highlights. Painting hair is a lot easier if you have a pen tablet, but if you are only using mouse, take a hair brush and tweak some settings in the brush settings and add some fade in the size jitter so that as you drag your brush the hair lines become thinner and it looks realistic. I patched in some dead decaying areas as well and worked to create the lower part of a tress which will be fluttering. I really liked her newest costume from WandaVision, so that was the way to go. Finally I worked on adding textures, wounds and all the stuff on Black Widow.
By the way, her eyes looked different from the rest, so I swapped them with the same image. Added some more decaying parts on our cap, and Hulk was looking too clean, so I thought about roughening him a bit. Oh, I forgot to add the broken dangling caps helmet strap. I cut the strap at the joints and used the puppet warp tool to bend it and give it a dangling feeling. Also textured the shield and added some blood splatters. For the metal texture on the shield, I kept the texture's blending mode to lighten and also played with the blend if section to get rid of the dark areas. Then on a layer mask filled with black, I painted with white with a grungy brush to only show the areas I needed. Same goes for the blood splatters, I warped it and tried to give it a feel that it sprayed on the shield in a spinning motion and then filled the layer mask with black and painted on it with white and a grungy brush to show only required areas. Wherever the costumes looked too clean and polished, I put some grungy texture mainly on soft light blending mode and roughened them up. Finally after spending ages turning 7 heroes into zombies, now it's the time to work on the environment. Let's go. I put some dark sky on the background and added some rubbles and debris to create the foreground. For the main scene, I chose some destroyed buildings to give it a zombie apocalypse vibe. The only thing that I had to pay attention to was to align the buildings in correct perspective. I also quickly darkened up the heroes using curves. As I kept placing the buildings, I also had to correct their perspectives. To quickly correct them, I took advantage of the perspective warp tool. You can find it under the edit menu. In combination with adding the buildings, I kept adding the atmospheric haze to create a sense of depth in the composition. Now, I have a very in-depth video on the concepts of atmospheric perspective and aerial depth. The link should be in the description section. I think you'll find it helpful. Next I added the lightning and this will be our secondary source of light. By the way, I think you have already guessed what the primary source of light will be. I started painting the highlights on individual heroes. I used curves to brighten them up and clip the adjustment layer to the hero group, filled the layer mask with black and painted on it with white to reveal the highlights. Well, up until now I've been ignoring Piximperfect's curves for a long time, but a video on highlights by Photoshop wizard Max Asabin really changed my outlook. I started exploring curves more and the more I used, the more fascinated I became. Well, if you watch my other videos, you must already know, I used to use solid color fills in linear dodge blending mode for the highlights and I have a dedicated video on it. I will add its link in the description as well, you can check it out if you want. But I think I will also make a video on highlights using curves in the future. Now comes the fun part. I added the hex magic on Scarlet which is hand and the red glow from it will entirely change the mood of our composition. I cycle through the blending modes to see what looks best and on a blank layer with the screen blending mode I also added some illumination and environmental glow. Now it's time for some action. It's time to light up everything in red. I again used curves as a clipping mask and tweaked it to get a bright red color cast. Then filled the layer mask with black and painted with white on the correct areas to get the highlights. The direction of the light is very important here to make the composition look realistic. I repeated the same steps of adding red highlights using curves on all heroes. I just had to pay attention to the direction of the light correctly. For the time being I'll just let you enjoy the process with some spooky background music. I'll come back to explain the other parts, just don't get jump scared when I start speaking again.
then I added some shadows so that Black Widow and Captain America look planted on the ground. I also added some red reflection on the debris that is on the ground. It shouldn't be that intense, so I kept it subtle. Next I added some form shadow on the heroes to create a sharp contrast. I used curves here as well to darken up the heroes, fill the layer mask with black and paint it with white on the areas where I needed the shadows. Time to make the glow on the repulsor and the arc reactor. I again used curves to create a bright light and masked it in required areas. I added some extra effects like lens flare and some flying debris. I took a bokeh image and added spin blur from radial blur to create the lens flare. I also added some extra smoke to add volume to the scene. And here goes the final result after spending some countless hours fine tuning everything. I worked a bit on the lighting, added some extra particles, added light bloom and motion blur and added some crane. Be sure to like the video and share it with your friends if you think this is cool. Also please don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you like my overall content, otherwise you know who will come to get you. Well then, I will see you in my next video, I wish you a happy spooktober and as always, enjoy creating.